If you're like me, the first time you touched a resin 3D printer, you absolutely hated it with every single thread in your body. And that might even be amplified if you started your 3D printing journey on an FDM based machine, which is significantly cleaner to maintain and operate. After my first resin printing experience, I lost it away, never to be seen again, for the next two years. But ever since I became a YouTuber, I've been more willing to dip my toes in the water and develop a comprehensive strategy to really start to enjoy the craft. These are my top 10 tips to enjoy resin printing. But be prepared to take out your wallet because unfortunately, a lot of these tips are going to involve you spend some additional cash. So in no particular order, first things up, you guys need to invest in a wash and cure station. These machines are total game changers because they're gonna streamline the process of post-processing your 3D printed models. And actually, the curing feature is great, but the real gold here is the washing station because these washing stations are fully automatic and they're going to ensure that the models you printed are fully rinsed, fully washed of any remaining resin. If you think that you can rinse your models in a bucket, I'm gonna give you two weeks and I promise that you will quickly find out how awful that experience is. And while we're on the topic of washing, tip number two is gonna be to choose your IPA wisely. You need to be using the highest percentage that you can find in your local area, but for the sake of cost savings, please do not go below 91%. Some people are gonna try and tell you that 70% is acceptable, but for me, that is a last case scenario. For an entire year, I was personally using 70% IPA to wash my models, and I was having a really poor experience. But the problem is that I didn't even know, I didn't realize how poor my experience was until one day when I decided to splurge an additional dollar, and instead of buying 70%, I bought 91%. And that was the day that I found out how bad and how poor the 70% IPA actually functions. I immediately regret doing that. I and maybe tip number three is something that I should have put at the beginning of the video, but I need to sprinkle some of the best tips into the middle of the video so I can ensure that you guys stick around to the end. So my first resin 3D printer was a bare bones, nothing fancy Volkslab Proxima. And that was a terrible mistake. And that is the printer that made me absolutely hate resin and lock it away for so long. So that brings me to tip number three, and that is that I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you purchase a premium quality printer like the Uniformation GK2. I don't have all the time in the world to review this printer in this video, but I have a video uploaded to my channel, you can find it here, and there are other reviews on the internet, please go check them out. And look, I understand that budgets exist, and I also understand that the GK2 is a very expensive product, but what you need to understand is that this is the bamboo lab of SLA printers. Before I actually got the GK2 and began printing on it, I either hated resin or I just tolerated it, but once this thing actually came to the studio, I truly began to enjoy printing in resin. Welcome, welcome. It is I, Jerry from the future, and I have a bonus tip for you guys. Bonus tip, it actually relates to the sponsor of today's video, which is PCBWay, but don't click away just yet because I actually use PCBWay and the bonus tip is actually very helpful. So PCB Way can print in a lot of resin materials, whether it's strong resins or colored resins, they can post process resins. And if you only need to print a couple items, then I think PCB Way actually might be a source and a route that you wanna take. The good thing about using PCB Way for resin prints is that you don't have to touch any of the harsh toxic chemicals. You don't have to look at the chemicals, smell the chemicals. You just upload your model and then they send you, well, your model back. So in terms of the quality of the resin models that I have sent off to PCBWay and got back, honestly have just blown me away because the fact that I don't have to deal with it at all and I can just get that detail and that level of quality back has been absolutely wonderful. Anyway, go ahead and roll the segment and guys, please 
Go check out PCB Way. Now, what if you don't have time to print your own models? That is where the sponsor of today's video comes into play. PCB Way specials in high quality 3D printing at an affordable price. A basic 32 millimeter miniature can cost as low as only $4. And they can also add a variety of surface finishes to your model. But if you have other jobs that need to be 3D printed, they can also print in peak, ASA, stainless steel, and even titanium. And in order to provide the highest quality service, PCB Way is going to actually perform a full model analysis of the file you upload. That's going to ensure when your print arrives, it will be exactly as you envisioned it. PCB Way helps support the channel and it would go a long way if you checked out the link in the description. Thanks again to PCB Way for sponsoring this video. So there is no way to really beat around the bush here. Resin is a nasty, harsh, toxic polymer to work with. Think chemical bank. Oh, they were chemical. It is tremendously difficult to clean, so you really don't want to make a mess. And while I definitely recommend you purchase a respirator for the health of your lungs, that actually isn't the next tip. Tip number four is that you really do not want to get resin on your hands. Within minutes, it can burn your skin and it can dry your skin out to look like the Sahara Desert. And the worst part is that it is very annoying to wash off. The standard soap that you have at your sink probably is not gonna do a very good job at rinsing it off. So please buy a box of powder-free gloves and I promise that the cheapest gloves that you can find will actually work for this as well. And maybe tip 4.1 or whatever is Buying gloves online, at least in my local area, is significantly cheaper than buying them at the hardware store or at any other warehouse store. Now, if you thought gloves were the first and the last tip under the cleaning category, you were way, way wrong. Wrong! So for tip number five, you should always have a roll of paper towels by your printing station, waiting for all of the drips that you have to clean up. And please, do not be afraid to just rip one off and use it for any little mess. No matter how hard you try, I promise there's no way that you will ever escape resin spills and drips. It just seems to be part of the hobby. And again, I understand that paper towels are expensive, especially if you purchase the double thick, high quality paper towels. But in my opinion, if you're not going through an entire roll of paper towels, per liter of resin, some sus probably going on. Or maybe I'm just a particularly mm. messy person. But if you only follow one tip on this list, and I mean one singular tip on this list, it has to be unequivocally without a doubt tip number six. You absolutely without a doubt need to invest in a full table sized silicone mat. And I don't mean just any random large silicone mat that you can find at your local warehouse or online. It needs to have these super tall walls in order to prevent spillage and leakage outside of the mat area. In fact, this is actually a silicone grill cover. And when this video is over, please, the first thing that I want you to do is go to the description, click the link in the description and purchase one of these mats. So tip number seven and eight go hand in hand, and tip number seven is really quite simple. In fact, tip number seven is actually the only tip on this list that doesn't directly cost you any money, and that's that you need to keep a jar or a bucket of water on your table next to your printer in order to dip your tools into the water and rinse off any cured bits of resin that might be stuck to them. And tip number eight is gonna to be to keep a jar or bucket of IPA directly next to your bucket of water. And in this case, I'll allow it. If you wanna save some money, go ahead and buy the 70% IPA for this jar. So the point of this jar is to take your tools and let them sit and bathe in that jar of IPA after you rinsed off all of the large particulates from the water bath. Allowing your tools to bathe in this bath of IPA is gonna prevent them from getting sticky over time and it's gonna make your tools a lot nicer to use. So sometimes you need to loosen up a little bit and not be so uptight. Tip number nine is gonna to be to stop trying to get every last drop of resin or IPA out of whatever bottle or container that it is within. Trying to get every last drop is just going to cause additional mess and trust me, that will definitely cause additional stress. 
And at the end of the day, if you save just a few drops, that really isn't going to equate to significant savings. If you somehow manage to save even one singular ounce of resin from an entire bottle, that's only going to equate to roughly 75 cents worth of savings. But in that process, it's probably going to cost you 10 paper towels, 4 sets of gloves, and you're going to be watching drips fall from a bottle for at least 5 minutes. So to me, that is not fun and is just not worth it. Now tip number 10, this is one that might not save you often and it actually might never save you. But if it does, it will save you hundreds and hundreds of dollars and it's going to save you countless hours of cleanup. If you ever, and I mean ever, even 1% chance begin to suspect that there is a piece of cured resin within your vat, you need to immediately go and try to clean that out. Most new printers these days have a vat cleaning option built into the firmware and what it's going to do is it's going to cure a sheet of resin across the entire bottom of the FEP. Yes, I know that it's going to waste a ton of material, but those pieces are incredibly sharp and the one time that the build plate goes down, there's a very real possibility that it's going to cut a hole in your FEP. So if this happens, it will likely drain the entire resin vat and because the resin is liquid, that liquid will drain through every single crack and crevice of your printer, rendering it disgustingly broken, utterly useless, and then you're going to have countless, countless hours of a resin mess to clean up. And it's going to be the dream, the nightmare that you never wanted to see. And of course, your resin printer is very expensive, so it's going to cost you hundreds of dollars as well. So there you have it. If you follow all of these tips that I've given you in this video, it's probably going to cost you an additional five or six dollars per bottle of resin that you print. But I do promise that you will begin to enjoy printing resin. And if you guys made it this far, you made it to the end of the video, please start your comment with the tip number of the one that you found most important or most useful. And definitely don't forget to like and subscribe because ho ho ho, Santa Claus is coming to town and I don't want you to be left out. Like and subscribe. I'll see you later. Bye.